follows us, never does it leave us. It goes straight on, it does not miss its time like the tide which follows the moon. This is why, in order to praise them, it is said that the Bodhisattvas are liberated from every action obstacle. 14. Prashat Yasamutpana Dharmaniya Desakusala. Sutra. They were skilled in teaching dependent origination. Sastra. They are capable of teaching the twelve-membered in different ways. Affliction, action and basis arise one after the other according to a continuous development. This is called the twelve-membered Pratiti Asamutpada. Three of these twelve members are called affliction, ignorance, craving and grasping. Two members are called action, formations and coming into existence. The other seven are called bases. In general, the three categories, affliction, action and suffering are mutual and reciprocal causes and conditions. 1. Klesa is cause and condition for Kaman because Avidya precedes the Samskaras and Upadana precedes Bhava. 2. Kaman is cause and condition for Dukkha because Samskara precedes Vijnana and Bhava precedes Jati. 3. Dukkha is cause and condition for Dukkha because Vijnana precedes Namarupa. Namarupa precedes Sadayatana. Sadayatana precedes Sparsa. Sparsa precedes Vedana. Jati precedes Jaramurana. 4. Dukkha is cause and condition for Klesa because Vedana precedes Trsna. Since Klesa is cause and condition for Kaman, Kaman cause and condition for Dukkha, and Dukkha cause and condition for Dukkha, it is a matter of mutual and reciprocal causes and conditions. 1. Ividya, ignorance, is all the afflictions of past existence. 2. From Avidya there arise actions which realize fruition in a universe. These are the Samskaras, formations. 3. From Samskara there arises a defiled mind, initial cause of the present existence. Because it is aware in the way that a calf is aware of its mother, it is called Vijnana, consciousness. 4. This Vijnana produces both the four formless aggregates perception, feeling, volition, consciousness and form which serves as base them. This is name and form, Namarupa. 5. From this Namarupa there arise the six sense organs, i, etc. Dot. These are the Sadayatanas, the six inner bases of consciousness. 6. The meeting of organ, object and a consciousness is called sparse contact. 7. From Sparsa there arises Vedana, sensation. 8. Within Vedana there arises an adherence of mind called craving or thirst, TRSNA. 9. The tendency caused by TRSNA is called Upadana, grasping, attachment. 10. From this Upadana comes action which brings about the new existence which is called Bhava, the act of existence. 11. As a consequence of this bhava, one reassumes the five aggregates of the new lifetime. This is called jati, birth. 12. The decay of the five skandhas coming from this jati is called jaramarana, oldage and death. Jaramarana gives rise to dissatisfaction, sorrow and all kinds of worries. And thus the mass of suffering accumulates. If the purity of the true nature of dharmas is considered one-pointedly, ignorance vanishes. When Avidya has disappeared, the formations also vanish and, as a result, all the members of Pratiti Asamutpada disappear one after the other until the entire mass of suffering vanishes. The person who, by means of these soteriological means and by not being attached to wrong views, is able to teach people, is said to be skillful. Also said to be skillful is the person who, examining these twelve causes and conditions, rejects any system and refuses to adhere to it so as to understand only the true nature underlying the Pratiti Asamutpada. Thus, in the Prajna Paramita in the chapter entitled Pokosink, the Buddha says to Subhuti, Avidya is indestructible like space. The Samskaras are indestructible like space and similarly all the members of Pratiti Asamutpada and the mass of suffering are indestructible like space. The Bodhisattva should know that. The person who understands that cuts off the head of ignorance without falling into it. The person who sees the twelve-membered Pratiti Asamutpada in that way will sit on the throne of body and will become omniscient. 15. 
Asamhaya Yukalpa Pranadana Susama Rabda Sutra. They have formulated the vows since incalculable periods ago. Sastra. The meaning of the word Asimkaya has already been explained above in the chapter on the Bodhisattva. As for the word Kalpa, the Buddha defined it by the following comparisons. Suppose there is a rocky mountain 4,000 li in size to which a venerable monk comes once every hundred years brushing against it with his silk robe. This great rock mountain would be worn out before a Kalpa passes. Suppose there is a great city of 4,000 li, full of mustard seeds, unsorted and not leveled out, and that a venerable monk comes once every hundred years and takes away one seed. The mustard seeds would have disappeared before a kalpa would have passed. During innumerable kalpas of this kind, the bodhisattva has formed the great vow to save all beings. This is what is called the vow of the great mind. In order to save all beings, the fetters must be cut through and supreme perfect enlightenment must be realized. This is what is called vow. 16. Smita Mukhapurva Balapan Sutra They speak with a smiling face. Sastra Because they have uprooted hatred, chased away envy, and they always practice great loving kindness, great compassion and great joy, because they have avoided the four kinds of evil speech, they have acquired a pleasant face. Some stanzas say